So here I am, sat next to a Dutch clock signed by Salomon Costa of The Hague. And normally I only collect English clocks, so why have I got this Dutch clock? It isn't a Dutch clock. The mechanism was made by an Englishman, John Fromenteel, under contract to Costa. And there were something like six of these which have survived, of which this was probably the last one, because John, as he went along, modified it. And here it is. It's the first pendulum alarm clock made by an Englishman in Holland for Salomon Costa. So the signature on this lovely little box clock on the Lambrequin reads Salomon Costa, The Hague, and is dated 1658. The movement was made for Salomon Costa by John Fromenteel under contract signed and dated the 3rd of September 1657. And this contract, of course, is written in Dutch of over three and a half centuries ago and requires an antiquarian linguist to decipher the ancient script and the arcane language. Uh, when the contract was first found, summaries of the contract were published in English by proud Dutchmen who naturally interpreted the terms that John came to learn how to make pendulum clocks from Solomon. At my suggestion, the actual contract was shown at the Huygens Legacy Exhibition in 2004, after which further complete translations and ag academic papers were published. The clause in the contract over the payment reads, when by him from and teal a piece of work will be wrought, for each piece out of brass and steel, therefore Costa shall pay him the sum of 20 Carolian guilders. And if the aforementioned brass and steel by the aforementioned Salomon Costa himself will be supplied, he from and teal then therefore will enjoy no more than 1810. From this I understand, one, the normal situation is that John provides his own brass and steel and is in paid 20 golden guilders. Two, as a fallback position, it is if, if Solomon provides the brass and steel, John only receives 1810. And this is also how all the Dutch commentators read the contract. So, if John is coming as an apprentice, how did he know what brass and steel uh, to bring with him? How could he supply his own brass and steel? And without an answer to this question, John did not come as an apprentice, but ready to start work using brass castings, steel arbors and pinions of his own design. The five other clocks with movements made by John Fromal Teal and fitted with dials are signed on the Lambrequin Salomon Costa, The Hague, Mitt Privilege, 1657. At this time in London, the usual English clock signatures also claim fake it, made by. So Costa is not claiming he made the clock. Mitt Privilege means underneath the license of the patent, and that is Huygens' patent in the Netherlands. Huygens also applied for a patent in France, but not in England. Why not? And I think that is because of Fromenteel's involvement in the design in general and the spring inside driving the clock in particular. How else would John have brought his own brass and steel with him to The Hague? How could he sign a contract ready to start work? This clock is dated uh, 1658 on the Lambrequin and the other clocks are 1657 so it looks as if this was certainly probably the last clock that John made and not only that it's got an alarm and what a wonderful piece of history this is the first domestic pendulum alarm clock in the world. 
So I've just opened the front door of the clock to show you some of the detail. Uh, you've got, which is typical continental rather than English uh, design, you've got a velvet covering all over the dial plate. The, you've got the chaptering here. Now it's naked brass, whether it was silvered or not, um, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. But what is interesting, if you look at the hands, they're made of brass, except the end of the minute hand here is in steel. So it gives a contrast um, against the each individually numbered minute going round the dial. Uh, the hour hand is just a nice um, plain design, uh, functional, not over fussy. And then in the back you've got the alarm disc here, which is set against the tail of the, uh, of the hour hand. And then below you've got the lambrequin here, which is Salomon Costa, the Hague, and then that's beautifully engraved, but almost scratched on the bottom here, you've got mit privilege. That's from the patent of uh, Christian Huygens. And the lambrequin covers over a hole in the dial, which you can actually put your finger through and swing the pendulum to get it going. The whole of the dial is hinged and there are two hinges on the side of the dial and there's a little latch here, this one, which you can open the dial by pressing it in and then the whole thing rotates out. And there it is still ticking away. And then the clicks shut. And then the door will swing shut as well. How's that for an alarm clock? The main thing with the, these Costa clocks is that they've got these cheeks. And these, this was designed by Christian Huygens um, to make the pendulum more isochronal, more keeping time. Uh, regularly independent of the swing of the pendulum. You can only achieve it if you have a very, very flexible suspension. And here you can see uh, just pieces of silk which are looped around and the, then the pendulum is hooked in and it is then driven through the crutch. So that the pendulum is suspended on the silk whereas the impulse for each tick in each direction by the escapement, the verge escapement, um, it impulses the pendulum every tick to keep it uh, swinging at the same amplitude. The unique features of this clock are first of all, it's been turned round slightly that the setup clicks, uh, which are only used once when you set up the, um, the, the spring of the clock, uh, so that you're, you're not using the, the last dregs of the, the wind down, um, so that it's trying to keep the more uniform torque of the spring. And so that this setup motion in the other clocks is all inside the movement, you can't see it. So to, uh, John, in this case, has brought the setup work here, the click, the spring, and the, uh, the, te the teeth of the uh, wheel. And they've all been made as an ornament, uh, improving the interest of the clock. And then at the top here, you've got a angled piece which is lifted up and then it falls off and when it falls off then you've got the, the, the little alarm bell which is on top. It doesn't strike 
uh, on the hours. It's solely an alarm clock. And you've got the separate little alarm box here, which is held um, so that it doesn't operate by this lever which goes up and down for the alarm time.